morning guys so how do you celebrate Mother's Day without feeling guilty about what you eat because seriously we all know that everyone's gonna get chocolates and we all know you're probably gonna get a Mother's Day cake and you know we all know that our you know we may not be may not be as healthy today as we want to be so how do we celebrate without feeling guilty Okay, so I've got a double whammy today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Belinda and I'm a passionate women's health mentor who help women take control of their own health via these videos and via personalized coaching and a few other things that I do on the side. So today is actually a double whammy for me. It is Mother's Day and it's actually my birthday. So, you know, this morning, my husband and my children made waffles and we had waffles and ice cream and maple syrup, uh, which I'm assuming a lot of you are going to be having pancakes and, and uh, lovely breakfasts out and maybe they've made you bacon and eggs or breakfast in bed or whatever. And so, you know, you know, you see my videos, you know my thoughts on sugar, like you already know. So what the hell am I doing, right? <laughs> so... Step one, here's some tips that I can give you to help you stay on track health-wise that I implement myself. I do everything that I talk about. You know, I'm not all hot air. This is actually what I do. So step one is I'm not going to berate myself. I'm going to give myself a day off. I'm not going to be saying, oh, I really shouldn't be eating this chocolate cake today. You know, I'm not even going to think about it. Like, it's okay to celebrate. It's okay to enjoy birthday parties. It's okay to enjoy Mother's Day. It's okay to enjoy Christmas. It's okay to enjoy Easter. Celebrate and don't feel guilty about it, okay? You know, sometimes us women are so guilty of being so hard on ourselves and not giving ourselves a break. So today, I want you to pinky swear that you're going to give yourself a break. So if you're here, you know, do that little pinky sign down there in the comments and let me know that you pinky swear to give yourself a break. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, what pinky swears are, I don't know if you did this in high school, but me and my best mate used to pinky swear everything. So, you know, make a promise without breaking it, basically. Okay, that's step one is do it guilt-free and don't berate yourself. Really don't. Like, you know, you've got to live life and you're allowed to celebrate, okay? So don't be too hard on yourself today. Number two of what I'm going to do today is I am going to increase my apple cider vinegar. <laughs> Bit random, I know, but do you know what I'm? why I'm going to do that? Because apple cider vinegar, one, helps you reduce blood sugar spikes, Okay, so when you're taking in sugar and chocolate and uh, gluten and whatever, it's actually going to reduce uh, the blood sugar spikes and stop my body from storing the fat. Basically, that's what this will do is help you um, process this and you won't actually store the fat. Okay, so because what happens when your blood sugar spikes is your insulin goes up and that is your fat storage hormone. So today I'm going to reduce the chance of that happening by having apple cider vinegar so you can have that in water uh, you know it's very strong if you have it you know normally you can shot it down but generally I just put it in water okay uh, and number three of what I'm gonna do to keep myself healthy and this is uh, fasting so if you haven't heard me speak of fasting before there's this great book you can read, and it's by um, Dr. Jason Fung. He's actually a Canadian doctor who did a whole thing on um, obesity, actually. It's called The Obesity Code, and he goes through this whole book about what we have gone wrong and what we've been brainwashed into thinking and all of this. And he actually goes through how to fast and what to do with fasting, and, um, you know, there's basically two things, you know, in life, you know, there's feasts and there's famines when you go through life. And these days there is literally a 7-Eleven on every single corner. There is no famine. So what he gets at with this is 
because there's no famine anymore, you know, we went through this stage a little while ago here, you know, where everyone thought that they were going to have to famine. So they raced to the supermarkets and bought everything in the bloody shop and there was no food left on the shelf because everybody thought that they weren't going to have food in this whole recent crisis. But that's still not the case. No one's had to famine, right? We don't really have world wars anymore where people there's no access to food. We have a plentiful access to food. So what he gets at in this book is if you feast, then you've got a famine. And that is what fasting is. So you have to make yourself go through a famine, you know, after you've celebrated. So that's fine. And that's what I plan to do uh, this week. I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow or the next day, but I will, you know, we're going to celebrate today. It's double whammy, birthday and Mother's Day. So tomorrow, I'm going to famine. So, you know, I'm going to literally go on a 24-hour, 36-hour, <coughs> excuse me, famine to get my body back into kilter, okay? And that's that's my plans. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this day. And like I said, step one, go. if you didn't see this at the beginning, then watch step one and don't be too hard on yourself. You know, don't be you know, making yourself feel guilty for enjoying Mother's Day. Like, literally don't. And if you're seeing this early, because a lot of my uh, viewers are in the US, then happy Mother's Day for you for tomorrow. Anyway, I'll talk to you then. Bye.